it's a really lousy world we're leaving for our children and grandchildren. Now, I'll say I'll say this about nuclear weapons. You know, I'm I'm not sitting at the Joint Joint Chiefs of Staff. I'm not in on the planning. Uh, I'll take it at face value that the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff and the and the Joint Chiefs of Staff successfully eliminated nuclear weapons in the initial phase of of, of an operation. But keep in mind this: that the Bush administration has built a new generation of nuclear weapons that we call usable nukes, um, and they have a nuclear you know posture now which permits the preemptive use of nuclear weapons in a non-nuclear environment if the commander-in-chief deems U.S. forces to be at significant risk. If we start bombing Iran, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to work. We're not going to achieve decapitation, regime change, all that. Um, what will happen is the Iranians will respond, and we will feel the pain instantaneously, which will prompt the Bush administration to move to phase two which will have to be boots on the ground. And we will put boots on the ground. We will surge a number of divisions in, probably through Azerbaijan, down the Caspian Sea coast, in an effort to push the regime over. And when they don't push over, we now have 40,000 troops trapped. We have now reached the definition of significant numbers of U.S. troops in harm's way, and there is no reserve to pull them out. There's no more cavalry to come riding to the rescue. And at that point in time, my concern is that we will use nuclear weapons to break the backbone of Iranian resistance, and it may not work. But what it will do is this. It will unleash the nuclear genie. And so for all those Americans out there tonight who say, you know what, taking on Iran is a good thing. I just told you if we take on Iran, we're going to use nuclear weapons. And if we use nuclear weapons, the genie ain't going back in the bottle until an American city is taken out by an Islamic weapon in retaliation. So tell me, you want to go to war with Iran? Pick your city. Pick your city. Tell me which one you want gone. Seattle? LA? Boston? New York? Miami? Pick one, because at least one's going. And that's something we should all think about before we march down this path of insanity that George Bush has us headed on. Imagine for a moment that somewhere in the middle of Texas there was a large foreign military base, say Chinese or Russian. Imagine that thousands of armed foreign troops were constantly patrolling American streets in military vehicles. Imagine they were here under the auspices of keeping us safe or promoting democracy or protecting their strategic interests. Imagine that they operated outside of U.S. law and that the Constitution did not apply to them. Imagine that every now and then they made mistakes or acted on bad information and accidentally killed or terrorized innocent Americans, including women and children, most of the time with little or no repercussions or consequences. Imagine that they set up checkpoints on our soil and routinely searched and ransacked entire neighborhoods of homes. Imagine if Americans were fearful of these foreign troops and overwhelmingly thought America would be better off without their presence. Imagine if some Americans were so angry about them being in Texas that they actually joined together to fight them off in defense of our soil and sovereignty because leadership and government refused or were unable to do so. Imagine that those Americans were labeled terrorists or insurgents for their defensive actions and routinely killed or captured or tortured by the foreign troops on our land. Imagine that the occupier's attitude was that if they just killed enough Americans, the resistance would stop. But instead, for every American killed, ten more would take up arms against them, resulting in perpetual bloodshed. Imagine if most of the citizens of the foreign land also wanted these troops to return home. Imagine if they elected a leader who promised to bring them home and put an end to this horror. Imagine if that leader changed his mind once he took office. The reality is that our military presence on foreign soil is as offensive to the people that live there as armed Chinese troops would be if they were stationed in Texas. Shutting down military bases and ceasing to deal with other nations with threats and violence is not isolationism. It is the opposite. Opening ourselves up to friendship, honest trade, and diplomacy is the foreign policy of peace and prosperity.
It is the only foreign policy that will not bankrupt us in the short order as our current actions most definitely will. I share the disappointment of the American people in the foreign policy rhetoric coming from the administration. The sad thing is, our foreign policy will change eventually, as Rome's did, when all budgetary and monetary tricks to fund it are exhausted. Click here to learn how Ron Paul is America's strongest presidential candidate on national defense. Or get involved and click here to learn how to register to vote in 2012.